So here we are in Photoshop and I want to show you the absolute best way to stretch your data in Photoshop, at least in my opinion. And it's a technique originally developed by Mark Shelley called the arc hyperbolic sign stretch. And I'm going to post in the description his website where you can read um, his explanation of how this arc hyperbolic sign stretch um, is implemented in Photoshop, how to apply it in Photoshop, uh, the reasoning behind it, and also some presets for your curves. You'll need the arc hyperbolic sign curve presets. Um, it's a zip file you can download off his website. Then you can apply this technique that I want to show. So here is Mark Shelley's uh, website, Photoshop Color Preserving Stretch. So he was originally uh, the guy who wrote the PixInsight um, ArcSign Hyperbolic Stretch module for PixInsight. And so PixInsight users get this uh, real easily. And if you look right here, he gives a link for the curve presets for the ArcSign Hyperbolic Function Curves. And once you download that, you get a bunch of these uh, curve files and you basically place them in your Photoshop directory and he gives you the link right here as to where to place those. But uh, this is his website and I'll put the link in the description. So the reason for the arc hyperbolic sign stretch is it doesn't desaturate your color data as you stretch and it doesn't cause stars to bloat and the stars maintain their color. It's the absolute best way to stretch your data in Photoshop in my opinion. And so let's go ahead and start. So this is NGC 7822 stack. Um, it's in 32 bits. So the first thing we have to do is change the mode and make it a 16 bit per channel image using uh, in the method box here, the exposure and gamma defaults. And so once we've done that, the idea would be to duplicate your layer and create what I call this channel mixer layer, because right now I have a green color cast because uh, my ASI 294MC Pro has an RGGB sensor, so I have two green pixels per red and blue. And so if you look at the histogram, my green channel is pulled uh, way ahead of my red and blue. And so we need to align these channels in, other, in order to get a, a better color balance. And so what I do is I apply adjustment layer from channel mixer. And in the red channel here and the blue channel, I'm going to make adjustments and in the red channel, I'm going to adjust the green and in the blue channel, I'm going to adjust the green. And basically what happens is I pull, um, from the green and boost my red. So if I just, uh, go here to the green channel box within the output red channel and I boost that up, you can watch the histogram, the red will increase. And what happens is I, I'm slowly approaching alignment with the, the overall green channel. And basically what I want to do is where this yellow is currently showing up, it's where the red and green are mixing. And I basically want that yellow to be centered within the red. So then I want to go to my blue channel and I want to boost the green um, part of my blue channel. And as I do that, you can see that my blue channel is now coming to alignment. And when they all mix together, I get gray in my main histogram showing that they're uh, mixed right in the center. And so then I hit OK and you can see that my image is now um, a lot more color balanced and uh, each of my channels, red, green and blue, are now aligned. So the next step is we need to do a, a levels adjustment. And so if you select the channel mixer layer and hit control alt shift E, it will stamp everything in your previous layer onto a new layer. Uh, this creates a non-destructive workflow so that you can access previous layers work in case you really mess up or you want to go back to where you started from. And so this I'm going to rename to uh, levels. And if you hit control L, it will bring up the levels box and the thing here to do is we want to stretch or sorry not stretch adjust our levels by starting with the black point basically pulling it right to the point where you see that data start 
and hit OK, and then we continue to do this ever so slightly right at where the data starts on the black side. This way we don't clip any of our black data. And so we can do this in the RGB, but we can verify in the red, green, and blue as well if, if there's a certain part or a certain channel that needs um, adjustment to bring us right up to the edge of where uh, the black point is wanting to be set. And we just continue doing this um, until we've got the data, um, the black point set as close as possible to the main spike in our histogram. And so I'm just once again continuing to adjust that black point as fine as I can and it looks like the green and blue channel need a little more adjustment than the red channel because the red channel is packed with uh, hydrogen alpha data because I use a triad ultra filter here. And so once again this doesn't clip my, my black data. Um, it just brings my black point as far as I possibly can bring it without clipping data. There we go. So I think I'm as far as I can go. And if we look at the histogram here, you can see everything's to the far left. Maybe on my green I can go up actually one. Yeah, there we go. All right. Okay, so this is where things get interesting and we begin the stretching process. So the first thing is to stamp your data forward. So Control Alt Shift E. And we're gonna name this gray multiply and what we're going to do is go to image adjustments hue saturation and we're going to make this about this uh, layer gray by putting the saturation all the way down to minus 100 hit OK and now we have a, a gray image and then we're going to stamp that layer forward control alt shift E and we're going to make what's called a gray divide layer so it's just a copy so in the gray multiply under the setting here normal we're going to change that to multiply and in the gray divide we're going to change that to just a divide and so what we're going to be doing is applying our stretch to this gray multiply so what the multiply and divide does is it prevents us from bleaching our data as we stretch our data the color saturation maintains through each stretching iteration and we don't get bleached out data or bloated stars and our stars look really nice when we do this type of stretching and the color data is preserved in our stars as well as in um, the overall data. So one thing that happens is there's an artifact due to uh, Photoshop where it, the data looks funny and so it's because the cache doesn't update properly. So you have to go to at least like 67% zoom value uh, to actually see the correct uh, data being displayed. So now once we're in this gray multiply, we can actually begin to do our stretch. 
And so the idea is to preserve the color ratios in the gray multiply channel and then divide by the unstretched luminance data. And in order to do this, the first thing we need to do is select the gray multiply, hit control M, and then we want to select a preset default of the arc hyperbolic sine curve preset. And so there's different ones uh, from uh, increasing curve to a very, very, very um, powerful curve at the arc sine hyperbolic 1000. So I stick with the arc sine hyperbolic 10. And as I do that, you can see my data will become stretched. And at this point, you can see the hyperbolic function um, being applied as a curve. Then you hit OK. We'll refresh the, the histogram here. And you can see that a levels adjustment is required. So you hit Control L and all my channels will be the same now because we're preserving the color ratios. And so I can just focus on the RGB channel and adjust the black point such that I don't clip any of the black data and continue to do that until um, I've adjusted my black point as much as possible. So I think that's probably good. Maybe a tad bit more. I can stretch this data. Or sorry, not stretch, uh, correct the levels. And right there I think is good. And then what I do again is hit Control M and I apply another hyperbolic sign 10 stretch. And my data once again is further stretched. I hit OK. Refresh my histogram and you can see that a slight Levels adjustments needed, control L. And increase the black point. And do it again to make sure that, see if I have anything left to adjust in the levels, maybe just one there. Refresh my histogram and we can see that I'm have the black point pushed as far as possible now. And I'm almost done uh, was stretching getting close now I'd apply the hyperbolic sine 10 again and see my result and see if I can still have room for adjusting the black point and I do so I'll hit OK but I can see uh, I'm starting to bring out a lot of noise but my stars are well preserved and so I'd hit control L again and adjust my black point let's see how this looks at control L again see if I have any room I think that's probably the max I can do it there and I don't think I'd want to stretch point past uh, this point here now um, and you can see all my channels are completely um, the color ratios are preserved so if I hit OK here now if I go to the grade divide and I do a control alt shift E and stamp it forward I can uh, zoom out now to look at my my total stretched image for my data so for me personally this is just a starting point of where I would um, continue to process much much more in depth this is just a very raw image with very flat contrast and there's a lot uh, of detail to be brought out with uh, further manipulations however um, what's interesting at this point, since I have a triad ultra filter, is to look at the differences in the channels. Here's the, the red channel contribution. This is the hydrogen alpha. So you can see there's a lot of good hydrogen alpha data in here. Then the green is the oxygen 3, and then the blue is the hydrogen beta. And you can see there's not much difference between the hydrogen beta and the oxygen 3. However, there is some differences if you, if you look at certain regions with lots of details. Um, in between them as you switch back and forth you can see um, some slight differences but uh, major difference in the in the hydrogen alpha so like I said this isn't um, the end this is actually just the very very tip of the beginning this is just how I stretch my data and you can see that the stars um, look really good in terms of not being bloated or bleached while the data the nebulosity looks stretched and you can see faint details to deeper details um, so very 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 great technique
for stretching your data. So thanks for watching this short tutorial and hopefully I'll see you next time with a video similar to this.